Let me know if this sounds familiar. You're reading some books. You have a number of physical books on different subjects that you're interested in. It could be on education or business or self-improvement, science, technology, whatever you're interested in. And you read these books and they have all sorts of great information in them. You want to retain that information and use it in your own life. So maybe you go through and you mark certain pages in the book. Maybe you write in the margins of the book things that are interested to you. Maybe you even have a note-taking system where you take all of the information from the book that's interesting to you and you take notes and you review those notes. And this is a great way to learn. This is a great way to retain information. In fact, if we revisit those notes, it's called spaced repetition. It's a great way to absorb that knowledge. But a few months go by and you remember that you read the book and you have a vague recollection of what was in the book, but it's starting to fade. It's starting to go away and you want to revisit it, but you don't want to have to go through all of the notes. You don't want to have to reread the book, although I always recommend rereading your favorite books, but you still want to interact with the information in a way that's meaningful. Well, that's what we're going to talk about in this video. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can take a physical book, convert that physical book into a PDF, take that PDF, put it into an AI system, and use the AI system to quiz me on the contents of the book so that I can develop a better understanding and a deeper knowledge and better retention of what was in that book. That sounds interesting. I hope you'll watch to the end of the video and see the entire process. As always here on Learning in Technology with Frank, we look at ways that we can use technology with intention to learn, teach, and be more productive. We now have a school community, I'll link it down below, that you can join to meet like-minded people to share ideas on how we can use technology in a more meaningful way. Let's take a look at converting a book into an AI tutor. So I'm a big fan of reading in general. I have quite a lot of physical books. I do a lot of ebook reading as well on a Kindle or a Kobo, but there's a challenges with both of these. A physical book is great. I love the feel of a physical book, the tactileness. I like flipping through the pages. There's something about a physical book that's special. The challenge with a physical book is that if I want to take notes, I'll have to have a separate device to take the notes. If I take the notes within the book itself, I can only revisit those notes by pulling the book off the shelf. So there are some challenges. The problem that I have with electronic books is although they make digital note taking easier, I can just highlight and annotate what I'd like. In fact, my Kobo even comes with a stylus. Those are locked. A lot of times I can't do anything beyond just what the book offers me and I can take notes, I can take highlights, but I can't do anything because I don't have it as a PDF. If I convert a physical book into a PDF, I can read it on one of my electronic devices, I can read it on the computer, I can read it on a Kindle or a Kobo, but I have full control over that PDF. So what I've been doing lately is buying more of my books as physical books and converting them to PDFs using this method. At this point, it occurs to me that I should probably say something about converting a physical book to a PDF. Where I live, that's legal. If I own the book, I'm legally allowed through fair use to convert this into a PDF as long as I don't distribute that PDF. And if I get rid of the physical book, I also need to delete the PDF. So those are some rules where I live. Check where you live, rules may vary, but in my case, I can take a physical book and convert it into a PDF legally underneath the fair use rules. In order to convert a book into a PDF, I'll use a book scanner. This one here is by a company called Caesar, C-Z-U-R, and I'll link down below to some videos that I've created on using book scanners. I actually have three different models that I use. The one that I use the most is called an ET24 Pro. It's a little bit of a larger book scanner that I keep set up inside of a light tent in order to get a lot of good quality scans. This is one that I keep on my desk and I have another one that's portable that I can take with me. You can check out that video. Like I said, I'll link that down below. But now that I've converted this book into a PDF and a searchable PDF at that, 
I have a lot more flexibility. So now that I've taken my physical book and I've made a backup copy as an electronic PDF, I can put that PDF onto my Kobo, my Kindle, my iPad, whatever device I'd like to use to work with that searchable PDF. And what I really like about this is as I make those notes, I'm generating an electronic notes file. A lot of times what I'll do is continue to read the physical book because I do like reading physical books quite a bit. But as I take notes, I will take them on my phone or on my iPad and I will reference the different sections of the book. This now gives me two electronic files, my PDF that I created from the book and an electronic notes file. What can we do with those in order to make sure that I'm learning from the book and still understanding and retaining all the concepts? That's where my next step comes in using artificial intelligence. So I'm using Microsoft Copilot 365 because I have an organizational license to Copilot 365. If you prefer to use a different AI solution, you can do that. The only thing I would check if you're using a free version of AI, you may not be able to load a large PDF. In this case, I've loaded the entire searchable PDF of the entire book. So this is a, a, a very large, well, not large in terms of size, but it has a lot of pages to it. It's about 800K or so. And I could also load up my notes or anything else that I want on here. But what's really powerful here, and in this case here, I'm using a Copilot 365 notebook where I've loaded this as a resource into my powerful teaching notebook, my project to study this. Notice I can even get an audio overview. So it'll actually create an audio overview of this book that I can then use to listen to while I'm commuting. That'll help reinforce my knowledge for sure. Something that I could revisit. I could play at double speed or a higher speed, maybe three months from now or six months from now as part of a spaced repetition strategy to really help the concepts of this book cement into my memory. I could ask questions here. And when I ask questions, I can ask questions in the way that the AI is going to, going to be my tutor. So I'll, I'll ask a question like this. So I've put in a fairly robust prompt here. I've said, you are my tutor for a course I am taking on best practices in teaching using this particular book that I've attached as a recommended reading resource. I'd like you to quiz me on the contents of the book, the concepts that are in there, and you should uh, ask me a question Check it to see how accurate it is, how correct it is. If it's correct, ask me a more in-depth question or move on to another topic. And if it's incorrect, ask me a more simple version of the question. The idea is that we are going to have a dialogue about this book. And I could definitely modify this prompt to even say, let's pretend we're doing a podcast on this book. You're going to interview me about the book. You're going to challenge me on the book, whatever I'd like. The point is that I'm going to use AI to interact with the concepts from this book. I've read the book, I should understand the things in this book, and now I have a powerful way of using, powerful teaching, powerful way, I have a powerful way of interacting with the material, which is really important when we're trying to cement or understand things and commit them to memory. So let's see what I get with this prompt here. And within Copilot 365, I could even have it assist me in writing a better prompt. So I could actually take this prompt and I could say, can you help me refine this prompt? Here's the objectives that I'm trying to achieve and it'll help me even refine this prompt. So here it says, let's begin with a first question. What is retrieval practice and why is it considered a powerful teaching strategy according to powerful teaching? Please provide your answer and then I'll analyze it for accuracy and completeness. Let's pause the video and I'll answer this question. So I'm going to give it a fairly simple answer to this question, just saying that retrieval practice is when you revisit a concept from memory, trying to recall the information uh, from your own memory and in your own words. That's not a complete answer, but we'll see what the co-pilot says. It's a partial answer. So we'll see if it's able to go here. It's on the right track. I correctly identified. So now you can see it's going to ask me a follow-up question for deeper understanding. Imagine, if you took all of your books, you made electronic PDFs from them, you put them into study sessions here with the AI, again, whatever preferred AI you might want to use, 
and you were able to have a conversation about the book, making sure that you understood the concepts. You could come back to this two months from now or three months from now, revisit your conversation, you could save your conversation, and you could have another conversation to improve your recall for the material that you're reading helping you remember and study and understand the things that you're reading for a longer period of time and with more, with more depth. I could even direct the AI to help me find more materials beyond just this book on certain topics so I can branch off and go even a little bit deeper. This is a great way to use AI as a study companion and as a memorization companion as well. Notice also here that it does give me the reference to this particular PDF that I have here. So it will reference any material that I bring in. So it'll tell me where I'm getting it from. So had I brought my notes in here and it referenced my notes, it would have given that as a reference as well. Very powerful. And I'm pretty fond of Copilot 365. The only thing with Copilot 365 is we can't buy that, that license as an individual. It has to be an organizational license through a school or a business. But you can get professional versions of ChatGPT, Claude, Perplexity. There's a lot of different tools out there that will allow you to do the same thing. One thing I do recommend is creating a project or a folder for each of the books that you're reading so that when you go back to the tool that you're using, you have a nice breakdown of all the books you've read. You can even combine them together and say using this project and this project. There's a lot we can do. So thank you so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Not a lot of people do. People drop off partway through. I like to think it's because they're so excited by what they've learned that they want to run out and practice it right away. But I really do appreciate your watching the whole video if you're here. So one of the things that I'll do is in the description, I'm going to go in and put lots of links on this video. I'll put a link to where I go through the scanning process using those Caesar book scanners. I have a much more in-depth video just on that topic. I'll put some links for some co-pilot resources that I have. And I'll put a link for the school community that I've recently started. It's a community, you can be a founding member. You can be one of my few special founding members. It's free, uh, or it's, at least it's free for now. And you'll, it'll always be free if you join early. So the idea behind that is I, I want a place where we can have conversations about using technology with intention, maybe get a little bit deeper and get to know each other a little bit. So I'll put links to that below as well. Thank you so much for watching and let me know any other topics that you're interested in and check out some of my other videos to see if there's anything there that's already been covered. Thank you again for watching. We'll see you next time. Okay, special end of the video bonus content. I'm going to go to the powerful teaching and get an audio overview. Notice when I do the audio overview, I can choose whether it's a narration with one speaker or two speakers. I can choose who those speakers will be, whether it's professional or casual, short, medium, or long in duration. And I can even put special optional automation in there so I can make it, you know, focus on research insights, simplify for a general audience, uh, make it fun, use humor, whatever I'd like. I'll leave it blank for this one just so I can generate a quick audio here and then we'll listen to it in just a second. So that did take a couple minutes in order to generate the audio, which is perfectly fine. I have a cat over here that needed a treat and a cuddle anyways. So let's have a look at my, or let's listen to the audio. Hey everyone. Glad you're here because today we're diving into teaching that really sticks. We're looking at powerful teaching. Unleash the Science of Learning by Pooja Agarwal and Patrice Bain. That's right. We're going to break down the key strategies from the book. That's great. It's about 14 minutes in duration, but I have found that these overviews are really nice and I'll sometimes even use them as a pre-reading exercise. So I'll go in, scan the book, put it into the uh, Copilot in my case, Copilot 365, generate an audio overview, listen to the audio overview, read the book and take notes, and then test myself using AI. That's a complete AI-based educational solution that really helps me remember, to the best of my ability, a lot of what I read.